All right, hi everybody, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, Schwab Dividend Equity ETF, or SCHD. And let's go ahead and get started here. After we get done with this presentation, I will go ahead and uh, go over to my Excel spreadsheet where I'll show you how much you can make in dividends per dollar amount invested. And I kind of ran a calculation in terms of the average historical dividend yield. So we'll go over that here in just a few minutes. But let's go ahead and get started and uh, go over this ETF in more detail. And by the way, this information can be found, a lot of it, on the uh, website for Schwab. So I'll leave that link down below for this ETF if you want to check that out as well. So the first thing to understand is that uh, this fund is essentially set up to track what's called the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index as closely as possible, less fees and expenses. And so uh, the expenses we'll get into is actually only a very small expense ratio associated with this fund. So that's one of the benefits we'll get into here in just a minute is that there's very low fees. And so it's a very uh, cost, effect, cost effective, it says even right here, low cost way to build a diversified portfolio. And also it's tax efficient. The third point here, it tracks a market index that is focused on both the quality and sustainability of dividends. And it looks at financial ratios of companies to invest in stocks that are expected to have more strength going forward relative to their peers. And so, um, however this is managed, right, what they're doing is they're trying to find the best of the best companies in terms of their financial ratios, in terms of, let's say, the debt to equity ratio, liquidity ratios, and other types of financial ratios to try to determine, you know, which stocks would be best for uh, in investing in this fund. Now, as far as fees and expenses, we're going to be looking at a modest expense ratio of just $6 for every $10,000 invested into the fund on an annualized basis, subtracted from the total return of the fund. And so essentially, you're not actually going to see this like come out of your brokerage account, but this will just be subtracted from the annual return. So that's a very low expense ratio, very low fees. Um, a lot of ETFs actually will charge like 10 times that amount. You'll see like 0 0.6, which would be 60 basis points. And so when you're looking at the fees and expenses for an ETF like this, it's going to be very, very low cost, which is definitely beneficial because um, you're going to get a higher return because of those low fees. Now, looking at the holdings for this ETF, you can see the top 10 here. Now, there's 104 total holdings, but going over the top 10, and then you'll see the percent of assets that is held in the portfolio, and then also the market value based upon the assets under management. So we have $1.5 billion invested into Merck. Texas Instruments comes in at $1.5 billion. Then going down the list here, PepsiCo, Pfizer. We get into IBM, uh, Verizon. Amgen, Broadcom, Coca-Cola, and Home Depot. So these are going to be, you know, pretty much the stocks that are historically going to be paying those dividends that are going to keep on increasing over time. So you're looking at stocks like your dividend aristocrats, your dividend kings. A lot of those stocks are going to be in this portfolio. And so the question then becomes, would you rather buy an ETF like this or perhaps just kind of construct your own diversified ETF by purchasing a lot of these companies? And could you potentially get a similar return by doing so? Because uh, you'll see here that, you know, these 10 holdings, if you take four times 10, that's about 40% of the portfolio just in these top 10 holdings. And they have a bunch of other holdings that are a lot smaller. But uh, the question you should be asking yourself is, you know, should you buy a fund like this and just get a widely diversified portfolio? Or would you rather be suited um, to purchase these individual stocks and try to find the highest quality ones? So that's really what it comes down to. Um, it, and I think it comes down to personal preference a lot of it because, sometimes your risk tolerance is not going to be such that you don't, you know, you might not want to add just individual names to your portfolio. You might want to buy something like this, or perhaps you don't even want to look into the research yourself and try to determine which companies are best. You just want to buy a diversified ETF like SCHD, and that will allow you to benefit from um, just having that diversified collection of companies over the long run. Now, looking at the sectors here for this ETF, you'll see that uh, about 20%, almost 21% is invested in information technology. We have 19.6% in financials. Consumer staples at 14.69%. Healthcare going down the list. Industrials, consumer discretionary, communication services, energy, materials. And then coming in at just 0.33%, we have it invested in utilities. And that's as of 6.30. So the last quarterly report, I guess, they came out with, they updated the, uh, you know, what percent of the sectors they have everything invested in. And this is going to be 100% equity. So there's not going to be any bonds or anything in this portfolio. It's just going to be stocks. And then looking at the performance, you'll see that, uh, you know, year to date, this is down 
um, 8.94%. Now the index that is designed to track, which is the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 index, is eight, down 8.9%. So you'll see there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. And on the website, it actually says that it's trading at a slight discount relative to where it should be trading, its net asset value. So, I mean, uh, I think it was like 0 0.04. So you'll see sometimes these ETFs will trade as a slight discount or a slight uh, premium to where their actual net asset value is. But um, like I said, less fees and expenses, they're going to be trying to track this Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. So actually, um, looking at the year-to-date performance, I mean, of the market price down 8.94%, that's not horrible considering the fact that the NASDAQ is down a lot more than that. And also individual stocks are down a lot more than that. And so when you're looking at individual stocks, obviously you, you run the risk if you don't have a large collection of individual stocks in your portfolio of one of those stocks going down substantially. And so it's just something to keep in mind. And then looking at um, the one year, the three year, the five year, 10 year, and then since inception, you'll see the uh, annualized returns. So we're looking at roughly 14, 13% um, on average. And so, I mean, Overall, that's not bad. I mean, if you're looking at a 13 to 14% return over the long run, um, a lot of people will be very satisfied with that. And then going into the uh, dividends here, uh, this is where we're going to get into the actual Excel spreadsheet. But you'll see the dividends are variable. And so, you know, starting off in 2020, we had a dividend of 0.442. And then, you know, we have seen some, I guess, a steady increase in terms of the dividends that have been paid out. So, um, if you have companies in the portfolio like Coca-Cola that continually raise their dividends, it makes sense that you would see that because if you have a lot of those companies that have continually had a history of raising those dividends like Home Depot, Coca-Cola, and really all these companies, then it, 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 you know, you'd come to expect that you'll see a gradual increase in the amount of dividends uh, for the total portfolio of SCHD over time. And you'll see here that we were at 44 cents, and then we got up to 50 something cents, 60 cents, and so on. And so gradually, I mean, you could expect probably those dividends to keep on going up. And with that being said, let's get into the actual dividend yield and how much would it take, for example, to make, let's say $1,000 or around there. So what I did here is I took the dividends that we were just looking at on this page, and I took the last 12 dividends. So going actually all the way back to uh, the end of 2019, and um, you know these, these are paid on a quarterly basis. But what I did here is I took the current price that it was trading at when I made this video at sixty-seven dollars and thirty-six cents, and I took the uh, dividends that were received, multiplied it by four because it's on a quarterly basis, and then simply divided it by the price. And then I averaged all these out here, and we came up with an average yield of three point two seven percent. So that's my own unique calculation, and you you probably get something a little bit different depending on how you calculate it. But if we're assuming an average yield of three point two seven percent. On the amount invested here of $25,000, you are looking at $68.13 in monthly dividend income. Now, since they pay on a quarterly basis, you would just multiply that by three. And then on an annualized basis, you're looking at $817. Now, um, you probably noticed the title of this video is How to Make $1,000 in Dividends. So um, as you'll see here, there's a little line there. I'm not sure why, but you can see how it says $1,362.50. If you put in $500,000, that would be the monthly dividend amount based upon this average yield of 3.27%. And the total annual income on that would be $16,350. And so we're looking at somewhere between $250,000 and $500,000 uh, if you get that thousand dollar mark exactly. Now, um, since we're at 1362 for 500,000, what we could try to do is take, let's say 400,000. Let's see what comes up here to see if we can get around a thousand dollars in dividends per month. What we'll do is take 400,000 times 0 0.0327 and we will get 13,080 and we'll divide that by 12 to see what that comes up with. And you'll see right there, we get about 1,090. So you're probably looking at about 375,000 to $400,000 roughly invested in this ETF, I would say, uh, to try to hit that $1,000 mark. And of course, since the dividends are variable, um, it's never going to be exact science. But um, if you're looking at the average over the long run, I would say probably, you know, at the current yield of 3.27%, if, you know, the actual dividend yield right now, um, I could actually look into that here. Let's see where it's trading at right now and see, let's take a look. This is based upon the last dividend, but uh, it says 3.7%. So um, roughly in that three to 4% range is probably what you're looking at right now. Um, I would say probably closer to that 3% range, let's say 3.25 to 3.75% is the dividend yield you'll be looking at. But since the dividend yield is variable, like I said, it's not gonna be an exact science, 
But nonetheless, that kind of gives you an idea of how much it would take to make, let's say, $1,000 in dividends. You'll see here with a million dollars, you could be looking at um, you know, $32,000 a year or $2,700 per month. And so um, keep in mind, though, over the long run, you would expect most likely these dividends to continually increase. You know, going from 47 cents in 2019, you'll see to 64 cents. And the most recent dividends have been anywhere from 50 to 70 cents. And so I would expect that number to keep on increasing, assuming the portfolio uh, continually has those companies invested where they're raising those dividends over the long run. So um, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really appreciate all the support on the channel and everything, everybody subscribing. And, um, you know, this is a new channel I started, and I really uh, love talking about this stuff and um, talking about different ideas for cash flow against your portfolio. And until next time, guys, I will see you in the next one, and take care.